What's going on boys? No guides here. Welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I've got a tactics and formation layout for the 4-2-3-1, 3-5-2 or the 5-3-2, 4-1-2 and 2 second variation and a 4-4-2 second variation. In case you're new here I release a new tactics video on my weekly tactics every single week um, and this is a system device where you have two systems or like two formations, one which is a more of a wider approach one which is a more narrow approach, so one for, because we know Park the Bus is very much prevalent now, every single Tom, Dick and Harry is doing it now. And we have one formation of course to close the game out and one for ultra attacking. So you'll start the formation one of these and depending on how the game is going, if you're winning, you'll go back down. If you're losing, you'll go more attacking and eventually go into ultra attacking as kind of your do or die. Now, um, just a quick want to quickly say um, I have a video each, I have an individual video for explaining each of these tactics, how they do work individually. So if you want more information or you're wondering about each individual tactic, of course, feel free to go to my YouTube channel and see all the videos down below. Um, I've devised this system. I would say number one, an ultra defensive to close out the game. One, which is more ultra attacking because obviously team press has been nerfed now. And I would say there's two formations here. In this one, I'm going to branch this down. You can either use the 5-3-2 or the 3-5-2. Um, I prefer the 3-5-2 personally because I just prefer to be a bit more narrower. But the 5-3-2 is better if you want to break down park the buses. That's something to bear in mind. Um, we're going to start with the ultra defensive formation first. So this is the formation, as I mentioned, if you want to close the game out. Now, I'll be honest, I don't use the 4-2-3-1 at all anymore. It's still a very much meta formation. But for me, it's just too boring. I don't mind, you know, getting 10 and 1 as opposed to 10 and 0 using the 3 5 2. Um, but the 4 2 is just too boring to use. But I use balanced 4 3, balanced 4. And I reduced the players in the box of 4. Now, this is solely um, the formation to close the game out. So if I'm winning 2 0, and I know my opponent is, for example, playing ultra attacking, let's say he's losing the game, this is a defensive formation where I can close out the game in the last 10-15 minutes or so if my opponent goes all out attack. We have removed long ball and we reduced the players in the box down to 4-4. Four, four. Um, for the instructions, stay central, come back in offense for the striker. Three camps to come back in offense and we've got a really drop between the defenders because what people are doing now is they're trying to counter you. And I think when you are losing, some, or some, when you are winning, should I say, sometimes you need to be able to control the midfield, er midfield area and drop between the defenders and one of the CDMs. Although it makes defense stability, you do lose it when, for example, your opponent is team pressing you. You need that maneuverability in midfield and to be, you want to outnumber your opponent. So you don't want to be outmanned. So we put them both on stay back while attacking conservative interceptions. Left bend right back are always on stay back conservative as you. And um, this is still a very attacking formation. You can still use this in the normal game. You'll see a lot of pro players use this formation, very similar tactics. Um, but I use it just to close the game out. Then I go to my two main formations. So there's two variations. I mentioned a 4 1 2 on 2 second variation video last week. Now, personally, I don't use the 4 1 2 on 2 second variation. Um, I'll normally put a 5 3 2 and a 3 5 2 here because that's my style. Um, but just to make this a bit more applicable to everyone else. Um, so we, I would say have one system, the 3-5-2. This is probably the best formation in the game. Balanced, 4-5, long ball, 6 and 3. Nothing has changed from that point. And again, it's the same thing. Stay forward um, for one striker. Stay central, get it behind. Um, the other one, um, you can, of course, but come back on defense with one of the strikers if you are not, if you're kind of too skeptical with your defending. I'm very comfortable defending, so I put all three of them on stay forward. If you're worried, put two of them on come back on defense. Um, can one stay forward for me, um, but you may need to use comeback and defense if you know you struggle with defense. If you're below elite, you need to, you know, obviously bear in mind your skill level. Um, left back, left mid and right mid, comeback and defense, both on get it behind, get inside the box and conserve the inceptions to conserve the stamina. Um, both to see them as a cut pass and then you stay back while attacking the cover center. Um, you might see me on stream. Don't forget I do stream on twitch.tv forward slash no guys. Link is down below in the description. Sometimes I do put get forward if I'm losing. Um, for example, when I use the 3 5 two, if I'm not, for example, losing by two goals, I don't need to press, but I need to get a goal, I might do that. Um, and that's kind of the lineup. And that's the formation I would say I would use for 70% of the game. Um, normally, I'll have the 5 3 2 in this slot, but the 4 1 2 1 2 also works very, very well. Now, obviously, with the 4 1 2 1 2, there is no wing player. So the benefit of this is you can either choose, either play the 3 5 2. So if your opponent is very narrow, you can try to match him or break him down the middle. If you know he's parking the bus, overloading the ball side, you can always use a wider formation. That way, inside the game, you can change between these in a fly. So use this depending on how the, the situation in the game is going. For the 4 1 2 2 second variation, um, balanced for 5, because you want to be a bit more wider, because the 4 1 2 2 second variation is of course a narrow formation. We do have a fast build up play. We have this on five, we do have this on seven. Now I mentioned in the video, you can either use long ball or fast build up play. 
I prefer to use fast, but I play for my 4 1 2 2 second variation because I want to be very, very attacking. I want to go straight gung ho. As soon as I get the ball back, I want everyone running forward so I can get loads of attack opportunities in within a short sp space of time. And for the instructions, again, this is going to be a little bit different from the video. These are tailored to my style. So, of course, feel free to tailor it to how you, how, how you want it. As I said in that video, be sure to check that video out. And we have won the strikers and come back in the fence. That way, when we're building up, we got one guy acting like a center forward. The other one on stay forward, stay central. Um, I got my cam on stay forward and um, get into the box. And I got my both my left center mid on get forward and my right center mid on stay back. So what it is, when you go forward, um, your CDM is going to stay back while attacking. He's never going to go anywhere. So assuming the CDM will stay back, he will kind of stay back next to him. So at least you kind of got like two players as backup. But you can also use this player to recycle the ball. And you've got three attackers and you've got one player. In this case, Ned Vedbridge joins the attack. Um, he almost acts like an unmarked striker. So the idea is if your opponent's using overload the ball side, what's happening is your two center backs occupy, or your, 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 your opponent's two center backs are occupying your two strikers. Eto is just in that camp, just in front of them. And of course, you've got Nedved coming inside, trying to make the overload in the middle areas, especially if you're trying, trying, trying to get break down your opponent, especially in delay. If there is delay, you'll see you probably change to 4 1 2 2 second variation. Stay forward, um, as I mentioned, and the most attacking play on get forward, of course, cover center for both of these guys. And if you want to be even more attacking, you can, of course, leave this unbalanced. And we've left the CDM on cut pass lane, stay back while attacking and cover center because even if you're down 2 0 and it's 60 minutes and you change to 4 1 2 2 second variation, you don't want to go down 3 0. You need at least one guy back for an emergency role. Um, for the left back and right back, we have them both on stay back, conservative and overlap for both ends. Um, if I ever want to send them forward, um, I very simply just use the D-pad tactics and I just simply activate attacking fullbacks and these guys go forward and it becomes even more attacking. So you can, of course, do that if you want to on the fly. Um, and both the left centre back and right centre back on default and so is the goalkeeper. And the last formation is the 442 second variation. As I mentioned, I typically speaking, I play a 3-5-2 and a 5-3-2 just because I find a 3, I find a, for me, I think a narrow is just too narrow. I need wingers in my play style. So I prefer the 3-5-2 because it's kind of like a, you know, if you think about it, it's kind of like a 4-1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two, if you look at it in the spine, except for you just have the left mid and right mid. So that's the reason why I use a 3-5-2 over the 4-1-2-1-2, one, two, one, two, but I know many of you guys do like using it. So that's the reason why I put it in this video. But if you do use my 5-3-2 setup, of course, feel free to use that 5-3-2 setup in this system. Them as well and then for the 4-4-2 and um, this is going to be the formation if as i said you're losing it's 1-0 it's 2-0 it's 80 minutes and you need to press obviously team press is now being nerfed now you have to keep pressing it every 15 seconds so constant pressure just saves you from pressing it all the time we have this on seven we have this on five long ball five and seven i was experimenting fast build up play but i think that even in the space of 10 minutes especially if you do come back let's say you're winning or let's say you're losing 2-1 and you come back and it's 2-2. If you go to extra time, your stamina will be dead. So I would say definitely this on a long ball. Because if you do go to extra time, it's going to be a mountain to climb back after. I would suggest, of course, using subs like someone like Promare, someone like Atal, Rashford, cheap subs like that, that you can also buy in your team. For the instructions, stay central, stay forward, one them on comeback and defense. Um, of course, what you should ideally be doing is so if you know, for example, Ronaldo's got more stamina, um, obviously have to play with the most stamina on comeback and defense. Left mid or right mid or comeback and defense as well. And um, one CDM cut past lane step out taking cover center. And the attacking CDM, we have them on balance. So you basically have the four strikers going forward as much as possible. And you got one guy coming in through the middle. One thing I'd say is the biggest misconception is when you're winning, people think they need to put stay forward on these players. No, because when you're winning, if your opponent's holding the ball, you have to press him. You have to be behind his defensive line. If you have players, for example, like this in front, and let's say he's holding the ball in midfield, how are you going to get the ball off his three midfielders? You have to bring your CDM out of position. And that could cost you. So the idea is that everyone is behind the ball, and that way it's easier to press your opponent. So if he's holding the ball over here with his three centre mids, it's fine because you're then behind the ball. Does that make sense? So you can kind of press him without giving away your position. That's the key with being ultra offensive. That's why you might see my one on comeback and offense thinking, why is it on comeback and offense? Well, that's the reason why. Um, you always want players behind the ball, of course, when you're pressing, never in front, unless you can right stick switch and change them manually. Stay back while attacking for both the left back and right back. Um, as I said, um, and of course, the balance formation, which is just a, um, which is just a formation just for chemistry purposes. Again, I don't play this formation in game. This is how dynamic tactics work. Um, this is the formation for chemistry. Of course, four backs are better than center backs. If you're basically an elite player plus, you would know that by now. 
and I'll strongly suggest and urge you if you haven't considered that already. And the balance formation, I never use it. It's basically my anti-kickoff tactic. So if my opponent kicks off first, I have everything on one. I have all these players on comeback and offense. So I never use this formation in game. Basically, when you change formation in game, it takes like a couple of minutes. It's like almost like a lag. Um, normally, you have to wait for the ball to go out of play or for like a prolonged period of time before the formation changes. So this is kind of an anti-kickoff formation if my opponent kicks off first. And the four formations. If I'm playing serious, I normally start on a 4 2 3 1, fill my opponent out first, and then I work my way to the 3 5 2. And I would say I use that most of the game, maybe 95% of the game. That's my skill level because I only lose like maybe one or two. Th maybe if I play a four weekend league, I probably lose max four games in a weekend league at the absolute max. So for me, it's a bit different. But you might want to do that. Then let's say, for example, you go one all ahead. You might want to stay on 3-5-2 or go back to the 4-2-3-1. If your opponent is parking a bus and you're really struggling with a 3-5-2, you can, of course, try the second variation or the 5-3-2. And the ideology is if, for example, it's 70 minutes, of course, your opponents will become more attacking. So you'll work your way back to the 4 2 3 one where you're still attacking, but at least this way you can close the game out. And the ultra-attacking formation should only be used, only be used if you're losing by a vast majority. So don't use this formation, for example, when you're 1-0 down in the 15th minute because stamina is going to be a big, big issue. It's one question I get asked. You're going to lose all your stamina. And even if you do come back, it's going to be a nightmare. So use this formation only if it's do or die. This is kind of like a situation like, you know what, Champions League final, think about it, 70 minutes. You know you need to be a bit more attacking. These two are not getting the job done. Your opponent's holding the ball. Then you know what to change to. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned, if you do want to use the 532, of course, check that out. And um, of course, I do have a formation set for every single video. My Patreon links are down below in the description. If so on my, of course, my social media links and my Twitch links as well. Thanks for watching, boys. Take it easy and have a wonderful evening. Looking forward to this patch next week. Fingers crossed they fix the bridge. And hopefully the week after that, hopefully, um, since they're releasing patch notes like Skittles now, I hope they release finally a patch to nerf defensive AI. Thanks again. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.